after giving this i have also released one video wherein i have told you this week also i am expecting a range bound market because of the put call ratio analysis which is telling me that i am in between the range of 0.88 to 1.05 so this says that i am in the range bound trend so i may not get a range bound breakout however this week if you see we have got the first target first time and got the trailing trigger so trailing for the first target 8627 level it got triggered and again we got a second time and today's price if you see that 8592 it has been given closed at this and it has created 8586 level however our one of the calculation is 8594 very close to this thing we have achieved though it is a range bound market we have achieved this particular thing and bank nifty initial stage we got till 19260 but we could not able to penetrate much however so so it has 0.38 to level 38 to level it has given the breakout however we could not get the first target also and we have retraced back and closed at specific level the point is this study may be if you mix it with many things and if you do not believe on any kind of studies then nobody can able to help you out if you are a open mind trader if you think that market move in specific rationality market move as per specific calculations then you must find our studies which is interesting you can learn many things but if you do not have a belief that yes it is a gambling no study is there in the market it is just a time pass so if you have such kind of views then you cannot take the benefit of any studies available in the market why our studies so this is what majority of the trader used to do so little understanding on the options for them i may spare few minutes to say what is a future so this is a contract between a buyer and seller to execute a trade for delivery on a future date so that is what called your called as your future both the traders having that obligation to pay the mtms mark to market margin and they need to pay some trade guarantee to their brokers and to the exchange so this is what the future contract is so mark to market margin so at whatever price you have bought if you are getting 1 rupee profit the net profit amount should be credited to you next day if you are getting 1 rupee debit that also need to be debited from your account in the next day so that is what a future contract is when it comes to the options options having two parts it is just like a insurance you can say you can compare the option strikes as a bond also so here options when we talk it has two types call option and put option again further we can say that this is american and european earlier days in indian market we had stock options as uh, americans and index option sir europeans so currently that thing is not there so all the options including stock options and index option both have known as your european options so when we talk about the european options they can be exercised on the last day they cannot be exercised in between the cycle so that is what the difference between a european and the american option so this is just like insurance we take to protect our future trade or to protect our to hedge our future trade so what is a call option it says that it is given a buying right given to the buyer of the option to buy at a particular price which is called as your premium by the seller however buyer of the option doesn't have the obligations so so buyer of the option doesn't have the obligation however seller of the option has the obligation 
For one simple example I am taking here, suppose you have bought one 8500 call option, call option of Nifty at 100 rupees when Nifty was quoting at 8600 or 550. So it is 550, it was trading. So you have, this is the underlying asset was quoting at 8550. 8500 call option you bought at 100 rupees. So if I take the difference, this is the strike, this is the underlying asset. So underlying asset, UA I can mention and this is the strike ST I can mention. So this underlying asset when you bought at 8550 8, or when you bought this 8500 call option at 100, so when you bought this future or the underlying asset having the same quantity, say one unit, you have the obligation. Tomorrow it goes to 8540, the remaining 10 rupees you have to give to the seller. So if it is going to 8570 or 8600, the seller has to give you the remaining amount, whatever is the credit is for you. So daily basis, M to M need to be credited or debited to obligate this future trade. However, whenever we come to the call option, maybe this premium will vary. However, the, as a buyer of this option, you do not have the obligation, you need not have to pay any M to M handout. This is just a premium you have paid. Premium means it is just like an insurance you have taken. Imagine you are selling this future selling this future along with that you are buying this call option so buying this call option so this call option if i compare with the future future is at 8550 call strike is 8500 so between this underlying asset and the strike there is a 50 point difference that 50 point difference is known as your intrinsic value or uh, intrinsic value so intrinsic value, the remaining the remaining 50 point what is there in that premium, because premium is at 100. So the remaining 50 point is known as your time value. Time value. So intrinsic value, time value. So every option has two components. One is an intrinsic value, other is a time value. So when you compute the intrinsic value of a call option, you have to see that the excess from the strike to the underlying asset that is known as your intrinsic value. Suppose if this is trading at 8400, can you say that intrinsic value is negative? No. Intrinsic value cannot become minus 100 rupees. Intrinsic value, because it is a value, value should be zero or positive, value cannot become negative. So if the Nifty is quoting at 8400, and 8500 call option is at 100 rupees, you cannot say that it is having a minus 100 rupees as intrinsic value. The intrinsic value can be positive or zero. It cannot be negative. So this is what the intrinsic and time value. And when you go for the put option, the similar thing you have to see in a reverse order. So for a put option also, Little, let us concentrate on the put option. Suppose Nifty is at 8350. This is the underlying asset. So you anyway, underlying asset I have mentioned. And 8400 put option. 8400 put option. Say this put is trading at 105. So if this is the premium of the put option, so from 350 to 400, there is a 50 point of positive changes are there. Henceforth, I can say it is having a 50 rupees of intrinsic value. If this 50 rupees is less from this 105, I will be getting 55 rupees, which is the time value. So this is for a in the money option. Imagine, same underlying asset is at 8350. However, this part I am just been stopping. So here it is 8350 and I am taking 8300, 8300 put option which is trading at 60 rupees. 
60 rupees premium. So what is the intrinsic value? Can anyone will tell me what is the intrinsic value? Underlying asset is at 8,350. 8,300 put option is at 60. Can anyone will tell me what is the intrinsic value in this option? Intrinsic value, money value. Zero. There is no intrinsic value. There is no intrinsic value. Those who said it is zero, they are correct. So those who said it is zero, it is correct. It is a put option and underlying asset is 8350. So though there is a 50 point difference is there, but that 50 is negative. So intrinsic values definition says that it should be zero or positive. It cannot be negative. So for put option, this is an out of money option, which is having a which is having a premium of 60. However, we can say this 60 is purely time value time value no intrinsic value is present here so this 60 is known as your time value so this is the intrinsic value and time value component of your call option and put option moving to the next part moving to the option are of two types in the money of three types in the money option out of money option out of money option and at the money option at the money option so atm itm something they have some sort names are there in the money option out of money option and at the money option when any either it is a call option or a put option when any option will have a positive positive intrinsic value intrinsic value positive intrinsic value it is known as in the money options when an option will have negative intrinsic because negative intrinsic means always it will have a negative points though we will not take that negative into consideration however wherever it will have a negative intrinsic value is to say that it is out of money when the option will have a zero intrinsic value means the spot or the future at which it is trading and the strike between the strike and the future if there is a zero distance is there or there is a difference is zero then it is known as your at the money options so this is the difference of your in the money at the money and out of money based on their positive intrinsic value negative intrinsic value and the zero intrinsic value so this is what the in the money at the money and out of money options we say about and whenever we talk about this option options used to be get traded in terms of a premium which also i have told you so how how this premium sees who fix this strike and how this premium price is initially being fixed so when it comes to the fixing of the strikes it is by exchange there is a specific rule is there if the price of this underlying asset between 500 to 100 it has a rule below 100 it has a rule above 500 below 1000 there is a rule above 1000 below 5000 also there is a rule so based on that particular rule they generate the strikes and when this initial price or base price of the option is fixed the base price so they use the volatility of the underlying asset in the black and souls option pricing model to find out the base price so i'll just see if any base price is present in the nsc site i'll just its volatility and just fixing of a price and post which you can change that price to a real price so that is called your base price of option so moving to the next section there are two pricing models normally we use here to Calculate the premium of an option. One is a Black and Souls model. Second is a Cox Rose Robinson's binomial option price model. This two price model, though it has similar kind of inputs it takes for calculating the option premium, 
However, while applying this two price model for different objectives, we need to choose the best model which is best suitable for our trading objective. So coming to this Black and Sol's pricing model, so what are the inputs it takes? Interest rate it takes, it takes the price of the stock or index which is the future price, strike price, volatility, time till expiry. So these are the very, very, these are the inputs it requires and it has a predefined formula based on that it calculates. And when you come to the binomial option pricing model, it also takes the volatility. It also takes the time in year. It also takes interest rate. So, and strike price, the stock price is also a part of this thing and the strike price also it takes as an input. So, it has the similar kind of input. However, the computation process is entirely different. So here Black and Soul say that the call option and put option premium we can find out from the one normal distribution curve as well as from the exponential return produced by that stock over a period of time. So, so using this particular formula we can able to find out the Black and Soul's pricing model. So this thing also if you just have a web search and you get this formula using the Excel also you can formulate a excel sheet which is uh, uh, which which will help you for uh, which will help you for making this uh, black and souls uh, uh, pricing model so here these two differences i want to show you for that only i have brought this uh, concept for your study so here what i am taking here i have just taken the future price time till expiry rate of interest call and put option strike and one volatility so that will be my IV or the implied volatility because I need the IV, I need the IV for uh, the options. So when we talk about the volatility and implied volatility, many people used to get confused here. They used to say that what is a volatility and what is a implied volatility. So option itself is not a direct instrument option is being derived from the future or it is being derived from an underlying asset. So it is a derived instrument. It is just an insurance. It is a derived instrument. It is a borrowed instrument. Anything you can say. So since it is a derived instrument, it should also have a derived volatility. So since it is a derived volatility, the name of that volatility we can say the implied volatility implied volatility this volatility is the implication of the hedging the meaning of that thing you can say this volatility is the implication of a hedging or this volatility what we are identifying in the option it is the implication of the traders fear it is the implication of a traders expectation on the market so anything you can say in that so it is a implied volatility it is not a direct volatility so suppose if I'm taking one Nifty future at 8721, I'm telling that yes, for the September, September 35 days are there, rate of interest 10%. I'm taking a strike 8700, color put option. So I'm just going for this particular thing so that I can uh, get a clear estimation of this. So here, I'm just taking that the September future is being last traded as 8639, 8639. So I'm just putting that same thing here, 8639, 8639 and time till expiry, 35 days, time till expiry when we talk about the current day we will not take into consideration. So September we have 29 days and August we are having 6 days, so 29, 6, so 35 days and rate of interest 10%. So this is the rate of interest also is being given by the NSC. They are also telling that 10% of rate of interest is applied. For computing this implied volatility, you can find out in their option chain. So same thing we are taking here. And sometimes also in our intraday option calculator, I used to take 12%. So that because intraday itself we want to come out. So for that only 2% I used to increase there. So that is just like a conservative estimate for that only. So 8700 call option, 
and this is for September. I have taken 8,700 call option, which is at 98.45. So now we have to start adjusting it. So based on 15 point, based on 15 percent of IV, it is telling that call option premium will be 149 rupees. However, my my call option premium is only 98 rupees. So I'll just go on adjusting this thing. I'll make it 14. I can make it. I can make it one four. So I can make it one one. So that's why there is no direct formula to calculate the IV. Just we have to go on adding this thing. So I have just gone for 10. So it is 10.5. If I give 10.5, 101. So can I go for 10.3? So 10.3, 99, 10.2, so 10.2 if I can go, 98.05. So here it is coming 98.45, so it is 10.39 they are dis uh, it's displaying here. However, I am getting 10.2, 98.45 if I can go for 10.21, I may get 98.25, so 10.25, so to four so this is the black and soul they also they have also designed as per the black and soul nsc option premium also black and soul so 10.24 you got so this is the exactly whatever the nsc is getting same thing we have got 35 days 10 percent we have taken slight deviation is there so so that is based on this so you have to go on simulating in this order to get that exact options implied volatility so this is what we got it so now so this says that once the price will move i have just taken some estimations once the price will move this this level so the options premiums will vary in these orders so this is what i have just so i have just oh i have taken this 8700 call option 8700 call option is 98 so not the put option so i think i have made a mistake here so call option is giving that 98 rupees so i am getting a different value for call option so call option they have given 10 point something i am getting some 8 8.1 so 97 98 they have given so i am getting only 8.2 so this is 98.45 they have given so 8.3 percent of iv i am getting for or 8.2 percent i am getting for the call option so so this is how you should calculate the implied volatility of your option it is a simulated process you have to do However, this method of calculating in the Excel, it has some drawbacks, black and so on. So just move to the binomial, how it looks like. So this is like a tree we have to form. It is a five steps tree. So one tree will have two nodes, two branches. That is again, again that the two branches will have four branches. So then, then, so like this way, we'll go on adding the branches one after another. So we'll just go on adding the branches one after another. So this will give us the tree structure. So this tree structure we need to compute for 50 steps. Then only we can get this actual estimation. So what does what do we do here? We have to take the strike price. So what is the price we have entered here? Same thing we have to enter here. So 8639. So this is the 8639. I'm just putting it 8639. Strike I have taken 8,700, interest rate 10%, time till, so time till expiry 35 days. I have taken 5 step tree, so this 35 divided by 5 is nothing but my delta. So how whatever the steps I will take, based on that only this delta will vary. So once that delta I will find out, delta divided by 365, delta is in the years, then I have to find out one. U and D 
up move and down move percentage so up move is the volatility volatility whatever is there so that part i have to take multiplied with square root of the time in year so this is as per the formula and d also similar way i have to take it so up move and down move then i have to find out one factor called a so this is also a exponential return with respect to the interest rate so that a i have to take then i have to find out a probability of up move what is the probability will go up and what is the probability it will come down so this is once i find out this thing this price whatever will be there 8639 i'll multiply with u and d to get two prices and i'll take only the intrinsic component of this options so if it goes to 8881 then my call option will be at what price and put option at what price that that is what i will be calculating and this calculation will go on for five steps first it will go to the fifth step and from there only the backward calculation will start and come so this is what it will be the point is here the call option whatever we have taken here based on this call option is 146 rupees it is coming so now we have to reduce this thing so if i go for the 0.9% so i am getting call option is 67 so my call option is 98 so shall i go to 10 so if i go for 10 i am getting call option at 74 so my call option is slightly more than that so i am getting 98 level so 98.45 and just going for 12% so same way of calculations just by simulating this options some simulating this one so to get a correct iv estimate this is the iv estimate we are going to get it so 94 14% also is high so i can go for 13.5 so 13.5 100 so 13.25 so so we can get 98.27 so we have closed at 98.8700 call option 98.45 we have got it here so 98.45 we have got it here so here they have just done a calculation and given you at 10.39 so here at this comparisons if you do it here 98.27 so if you see the binomial five step tree five step tree also holds good in some specific cases you are getting a iv of 13% when you compare same inputs you are taking when you compare with the black and soul you are getting 8.3% so black and soul gives you a 8.3% of estimate binomial gives you 13.3% of the estimate so if you compare this thing if these two iv parameters if you take into consideration and if you go on comparing this kind of things in intraday always you will find out that binomial gives a better iv calculation as compared to the black and sols that is the reason why i used to say that the the softwares what we have designed it is using the binomial option pricing model because of its accuracy in calculating the implied volatility once the implied volatility is perfect you can get the estimation of those things perfect however i cannot depend upon the nsis that site info uh, because that calculation is little fragile sometime you won't get any implied volatility also it will disappear so that is a programming very great error is there but i do not know how they fix it but sometime this iv also completely disappears from their price levels you can say that here no iv is there so similarly sometimes you can find out that no iv will be present there also so that's why i never take consider this is a correct calculation however if you compare between the same inputs we have taken 35 days strike price 8700 your stock price is 8639 interest rate 10% everything same however when we compute as per the binomial and as per the black and sols we got a two different iv 
So now question is which one we should trust? Which one we should which one we should accept as an analysis? Or which one is it true? So you just look into this particular factor of the formulas. If you look into the Black and Souls formula, it is just a normal distribution curve, statistical curve, and it is having a fixed formula. If you look into this binomial option pricing model, it is not a fixed formula. You calculate the up move, you calculate the down move, you calculate the probability of up move, you calculate the probability of down move, you calculate the expected returns over a time based on the interest rate. Expected returns produced by the money on a fixed interest rate. So all these things, whatever you have taken, it is not a fixed formula or it is not a fixed thing. It is, you can say, this is a discrete assumption of the prices. So this is a discrete assumption of the prices. So this makes the binomial option pricing model much, much, much accurate to predict the option price as compared to the binomial. So those who are using our software for intraday, those who are using our software for positional, so we program this binomial option pricing model. Henceforth, its accuracy also is is quite higher as compared to the other tools. So volatility and implied volatility, I have already told you. So, so this is what the implied volatility and volatility, this is how the binomial and the black and sold differ from each other. Now when we come to the trading, our, our behavior towards this theory should be different. So once you go for a trading, you must ask whether I should trade in call option or in put option. If I am trading in call option, why I should trade in call option? Why I should trade in put option? If I want to buy, because if I am an intraday trader, I want to trade in options. Whether I should buy a call option or buy a put option? These are the very critical questions you need to answer before you enter the trade. So. So for that one trend analysis is required and that trend analysis whatever you will do that must be a good trend analysis so that you can able to do a perfect trade in the options. So those part of the things also we will discuss tomorrow. How we can choose a correct strike for the trade, how we can initiate a trade and along with that we will also discuss about the option Greeks and how to form the strategy set. So this is all about the basics of the options you have learned today. And before I wind off the session, I just want to show you our offer, what we have given currently. So this is a offer we have given for our complete course buyers, those who wish to. Because learning, I believe that learning only can make you a disciplined trader, a successful trader, simply by browsing through the net, looking at the TV channels, looking at different analyst stock is not going to solve your long-term trading goal. You have to equip yourself with some valid concept, the concept which proof yourself in front of you. So when we talk about the concept which proof in front of you, though currently I campaign aggressively for the one standard deviation, few months back also you would have seen that I was demonstrating on the JV technique. Many years back, I was demonstrating more on the pair trade. Since these techniques of pair trade requires a higher capital to implement, many retail traders do not opt for that. So when I talk about the GAV, one standard deviation techniques and other things, these are the proven concepts. They have proven in front of you. So if you see one weekly trend estimate, you just tell me, you this is not, don't take that this is just for a campaigning I'm doing. One standard deviation method, these calculations has given to you if you have you are using any chatting tool and if you have a backup data, one minute data or tick data. Just compare these prices 8447, 8647, 
8626-8610-859. These prices, how far it is valid on the chart? It is a mathematical calculation we have done much before. Today it has settled at 8591 point something, one or two points below this. It has not settled anywhere means it is proving in this kind of way it is proving from the past 49 weeks so when you talk about a method you must say that on the opening closing or in the settlement basis how true that method is that should be then only you should accept a method you should not accept a method just by that yes it is giving me it is given by someone and i have to accept it has to prove in front of you. So if there is no science, then why market has closed near to these things? Why not in any other price? So if you, but in spite of that, it is if you want to distrust on this method. So it is up to you. However, it has proven its sincerity in accepting the trend. So this is, these are the techniques we have, I have authored in my book. This is the, the new techniques I have brought. If you have, a world buyer, if you would have bought my books on this GAN course, which has 34 intraday trading techniques or volatility principles, ebook. these are the techniques is already present in that book, which I have authored in the year of 2005. So this way, a pair trade concept, what I am telling you, that also I have authored in 2005, not now. So from that period to till day, many small small improvements we have brought in that system however that method i have not altered or diluted now so this is what i have given that time from that time to till now i am just sticking to that so when we talk about a technical course of this smart finance it is entirely different you know what is say what, how to identify a trend continuation and trend reversal pattern mathematically which you won't get in any way so this is the stops I just want you to learn. So if you want to become a long-term achiever in the market, instead of unwisely going on doing the trades and losing the money, please spend some time to learn some valid concept, which you yourself can able to test and prove. Educate yourself. Then you can think of the trading. Trading will be there. Take sufficient time to educate yourself. Post that if you start trading, then trading will be, you will get excellent results from the trading. So this is what I used to say, and this is what aim for that only we have the step date. And uh, this, uh, normally this package comes at a cost of 17,500, and we have an offer now, 15,500 we are offering for three days in the Jamastami festival offerings there. So for that we are offering that. So if you are interested in this package, you can call to our sales number. If you have any query associated with this basic course, you can ask.